Hello and welcome to another P-Log. Today is the first P-Log in October. I'm looking! And why is that a big deal? Well, because a year ago, the first week of October was when I posted uh, my first YouTube video on this channel. And it's been a great year since I really committed to doing this thing on my own and saying what I want to say boldly and with joy and everything. So yeah, one of the first things I'll go over today in celebration of Pecans Month, I guess we can call it, I don't know. I'm gonna teach y'all the song, Pecan to Luna Welcome. Well, actually, I'm not really sure what it's called. It used to just be called Picking Pecans because when I first made it, or when I first came up with it, it was at Baylor and it was in February. It was around the time that I was beginning to take piano lessons for class. I was messing around on the piano because I was tired of practicing scales <laughs> and I was tired of practicing bagatelle. I started messing around on the keyboard and that was the very first time I made my own song. It was really cool and I like it because it's really happy and then the fact that I wrote it is serendipitous as well. So I, I call it the pecan picking song because the way it was written was serendipitous and it talks about a serendipitous moment of my life. I call it the pecan picking song or Precious Picks Pecans, something like that. I've messed with it a little bit more in the summer of 2017. I was messing with it again and I actually added to the story. That's when I was like, oh my goodness, I have to make a story out of this song. Yeah, so you'll be seeing that sometime. <laughs> sometime being relative, time is relative to me. I mean, I do have a timeline, but whenever I say you'll see it, it's not something that you'll know the date of, it's just something that will happen. And I hope you're ready for it. So, real quickly, I'm going to draw out um, a piano keyboard and give a little piano lesson. So it'll be a piano 101 today. And I'm gonna be talking while I'm drawing because I don't wanna waste this time for my recording. I actually have only 18 minutes for this video to record, so I can't just be drawing. I did music in elementary school, as we all did, and I did orchestra um, in middle school, my 7th and 8th grade year, I played the viola. I actually joined orchestra because my brother did orchestra. When he was in 6th grade, I saw him in theater, so I did theater. But then he switched to orchestra, so I switched to orchestra. But in a way, I, I've always had an interest in orchestra. I've always loved music. In fact, in fifth grade, when they were introducing fifth grade strings, I wanted to take it, but I was scared that my dad would say no because of money. I was actually wrong, but I still missed that opportunity because I told him when it was too late. He was like, don't, don't assume things. And I was like, okay. So I've gotten used to receiving a lot of no's because it's like, you never know when they're gonna say yes, so just always ask. I became bold after that day, I would say. Not so bold, but at least bold enough to ask my dad for a few things. All right, I just finished drawing the black keys. I know this looks really wonky, but it'll do. What you should recognize here is a pattern. And for those who aren't pattern-minded, I don't have a method for teaching that. Learning piano for me was very much learning how to look at patterns. The first song that I learned was Canon and D. It was the song that was played at my mom and dad's wedding. I learned it from a children's keyboard that would light up for you to play the song and learn it. And I ended up playing that at my talent show when I was in fifth grade. Question for you all, actually never have taken or have taken a piano lesson. And that was the first song I learned. Other songs that I learned were on the Yamaha keyboard. That was like $99 at Sam's Club. It was really cool. I have it, but it's at my dad's house. Right now I'm at my mom's house. A lot of people, they know about the Synthesasia tutorials on YouTube. That's what I used to watch a lot of. And I learned The River Flows in You by Yerma. 
everyone, I feel like everyone, I, I saw someone post this on their story. I feel like every self-taught uh, piano player, it's like they learned that one because it was, it used to be called Bella's Lullaby in reference to Twilight, but that's false. Bella's Lullaby isn't like that at all. Music theory. I got in more depth with music theory my senior year of high school. That was the only music class I took throughout my high school career. And I took it with the orchestra teacher, Mr. Bustos. It was a very fun class. I even got to play a little bit viola for a lesson. Mr. Bustos, I think he loves that class. By the way, he went to Baylor for um, music education. He played the cello, because that's his instrument in the orchestra. But he also had to learn another one, because being a music major, you have to learn more than one instrument. I also took a little bit of piano in 7th or 8th grade, but I gave it up because it was hard for me to really do the alto clef for the viola and the, the grand staff and or the G clef and then the bass clef um, or the F staff. You know, this is stuff that just sounds like blah blah blah, but I'll, I'll draw it for you. That's the G clef and then this is the F clef. And the way you can tell is because, I don't know, it kind of looks like an F here, and then it kind of looks like a G here. And I don't want to teach too much music theory. I mean, I should, because I think foundation is important. I'm just trying to teach you the, the melody, <laughs> not make a foundation. Otherwise, it would be falling off right now and you would see that. And I have written how it would be notated before in, a, in time. But I, I don't keep that in mind. I just play it as it feels. The song, uh, Picking Pecans, whatever you want to call it, um, it's on the key, it's in the key of G. I basically play uh, an arpeggio, which is basically a broken chord. So instead of playing a chord all at once, and it's, it's in the key of G, by the way, so that means it would be one sharp here, and then one sharp here. Well, let me just draw it out right real quick. One. And I actually drew the lines up perfectly on this G1 because the sharp is on the F, every good boy does fine, which is correct, and the dot where the clef starts its swirl on is on the G, which is how it's drawn again. The bass clef, it does good boys do fine always. The colon for the bass clef is split by the F the line that represents F, and that's where the sharp rests as well because in the key signature, which indicates what key you're playing the song in, um, it's just to save space with notating. There's one sharp and it's on the F line. And it's the same thing here, it's on the F line according to the, the G, the G clef or the treble clef. The grand staff is when, here I'll draw it real quick, and there's a bracket. A grand staff is basically this. The bass and the treble clef are stacked on top of each other. That's for piano. The song is in the key of G, which is represented here by the key signature with one sharp. Pop, pop, pop. Instead of um, every good. One, two, three. Um, instead of it being played like that, that would be a chord. It would be like, pop, which at the very end of the song, you hear something like that. But in arpeggio, is when it is one, two, three. So they're played separately in the music time. Of course, if we were to notate it, usually when chords are together, like that. The heads are all in one stem because they're played at the same time. So it's ba 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 da ba. Okay, so it's, now I have to teach you about hands. OMG, this is why you prepare your lessons, kids. Let's just draw this hand real quick. There's a numbering system for piano. The thumb will always be one whether it's your right or left hand. So one, two, three, four, five. All you have to do is rest your hands at root position, meaning that your thumb, the one finger, is resting on the root or the, the tonic, do of the song or the name, the, the name of the key. So G is the name of the key. So your thumb will rest on G. And everything else is just as if you're gonna put them 
on each white key. So the pattern is one, three, five, three, two, one, one, one. The right hand is very easy, very fun. It's one, three, five, three, two, one, one, one. <laughs> something like that so yeah that's basically it music theory will be next time next time when it's like, like relevant <laughs> okay bye <laughs> one, three, five, three, two, one, one, one.